Hello everyone, welcome to Noble Forensics. I am Saumya Gajla. Here I am discussing about the principles of forensic science. There is few basic principles in the forensic science which helps in the forensic crime investigation. Like uh, while collecting evidences, uh, uh, during analysis of evidences in the laboratory, while reconstructing the events of crime and also uh, for identifying the perpetrators, these principles will definitely help. And very first one is Lockhart's principle of exchange. According to this, every two objects or two persons will come into contact. There should be some mutual exchange of material. And second one is law of individuality. Everything is individual in this nature. Nature never duplicates. And law of progressive change. Everything including every evidence will change with the passing time. That is law of progressive change. Then principle of comparison, it relates to the comparison of evidences that likes can be compared, similar objects, similar evidences to be compared. Then principle of analysis, it is not just about analyzing the evidence but also uh, proper about proper collection of the evidence to be analyzed. Then law of probability, it helps in the reconstruction of events of the crime and these six are the basic principles in the forensic science. Here I am discussing individually, the very first one is Locard's principle of mutual exchange which was proposed by Edmund Locard so that it is named Locard's principle of mutual exchange and which states that every contact leaves a trace, every contact leaves a trace, uh, the person's contact with any surface, any area, it definitely leaves a trace. And the Locard's principle of mutual exchange, a theory that relates to the transfer of the trace evidences between objects to which they come in contact with. If I touch any surface, then definitely I leave my fingerprint there. And also, I will get some amount of dust from there. So, there is some mutual exchange of uh, things, evidences, traces. And it states, whenever a contact is established between two surfaces, there will be mutual exchange of matter across the con contact boundary. And when coming to the crimes, in crimes, it is virtually impossible for a criminal to commit a crime without leaving evidence behind and also without carrying away some amount of evidences with him. Means, according to this principle, uh, in the crimes, it is not possible for a perpetrator to commit a crime without leaving evidence and also without carrying evidence. So, if there is no such evidence like in the crime scene, then it is definitely human fault to find it, investigators fault to find it. But there should be at least some amount of traces. He may leave. And also, the criminal or his instruments also pick up traces from some contact. Like if he, if the perpetrator using a screwdriver to open a locker, then definitely that tool will leave some tool marks on the locker. And also some amount of uh, metal pieces, metal traces or any paint traces of locker will get come into contact with the screwdriver. So, there is mutual exchange of material. Then these trace evidences left in the crime scene. That trace evidences will help to establish a link between the suspect and the victim and also helps to prove that the perpetrator, the suspect is present at the crime scene. And it is the basis of scientific crime investigation. Then I am repeating again the same principle. When a contact occurs between two items, there will be always an exchange of matter. Then it is practically impossible for a criminal to commit the crime, especially considering the intensity of a crime without leaving traces of his presence. So it is impossible to a criminal to commit a crime without leaving trace evidences. So that left behind evidences will help the investigator to link that criminal to the crime scene. Then the following are the most probable locations to get uh, evidences uh, according to this principle. Uh, the perpetrator definitely come into contact at the areas of point of entry and main area of the crime scene and point of exit. Consciously or unconsciously will get come into contact with that areas. Like if that person enters through breaking a window, then definitely he leaves his fingerprints, footprints there while entering into the crime scene. And also some amount of broken glass pieces will come into contact with his clothing. So, there is exchange of material. That glass pieces or fingerprints link that person with the crime scene. 
A common example that a person while walking the loose ground, he leaves foot to wear print there and also he get uh, some amount of soil on his shoes. So, there is a mutual exchange. He is leaving foot wear print and he is getting some amount of soil. There is a mutual exchange according to this principle. Then second principle is law of individuality. Everything in the nature is individual. Nature never duplicates. Every object natural or man-made has an individuality which is not duplicated in any other object or in other words. No two things in this universe are alike even when they are manufactured in the same machine one after the other. For example, if two screwdrivers are manufactured in the same machine one after the other, even though they have some dissimilarity because of wear and tear marks of uh, that manufacturing machine or any other. Then the law of individuality has fundamental importance and form the basis for forensic identification. Because of that individual nature of all objects, we can individually identify that particular perpetrator. If uh, blood evidence, then it have individuality of DNA. If fired bullet, it have individuality of striations. That will help that will help uh, to establish the individual identity. Like uh, with the DNA, we can identify individually that particular person. With striation marks and bullet, we can identify that particular firearm. Then example of uh, fingerprints. The fingerprints were taken one after the other on the same paper with the same ink and by the same person also not similar like uh, if the same person imprinting fingerprints side by side on same paper even though that two fingerprints uh, don't give any perfect superimposition it is similar like the tools uh, if two tools are manufactured in the same machine one after other also they have some dissimilarity as the same way fingerprints also if imprint one after other also they have dissimilarity they don't give any perfect superimposition but why why fingerprints of same person doesn't give any superimposition because of imperfect inking unequal pressure and any differences uh, of the surface of the paper these will affect and also this will give some differences to that prints but uh, uh, finger ridge pattern fingerprint pattern ridge count these all are same but they don't get any superimposition so they are unique in the nature so it is what the law of individuality then third law is law of progressive change according to this everything changes with the passage of time yes everything and anything will change with the passage of time coming to the crime story uh, if there is a blood stain blood stain when it is in fresh stage it is in bright red color but when passing time it changes into brownish black color and even after a few days few weeks it becomes blackish color so here with passing time blood is changing and actually in the forensic point of view what is changing here quality the quality of the blood stain the quality of the blood evidence is changing which means it definitely affects the further analysis of that blood sample so according to this principle it affects the quality of analysis the progressive change the uh, change with the passage of time will affect the quality of analysis and also the results in the lab quality of analysis and further analysis in the lab will affects with the progressive change then this principle demands prompt action in criminal investigation which means within less time accurately we need to investigator need to collect the evidences and need to proper package within less time so doing within less time this collection and packaging accurately will uh, maintain the quality of the sa sample then coming to the fourth the principle of comparison only the likes can be compared the similar things can be compared like there is a photograph of tool mark then it should be compared with the photograph of suspect tool mark only not uh, to be compared with the directly tool mark or directly tool the photograph of tool mark should be compared with the photograph of suspect tool mark only that is only the likes can be compared for example cast cast lifting of a foot wear print is comparing with the uh, 
another uh, cast lifting of the footwear print only this principle is very important particularly in the laboratory investigation that is the type of specimen or sample required for comparison in the lab which means while sending evidences to the laboratory for comparison purpose similar objects to be sent if we are sending a photograph then we again send the photograph to be compared not directly any object see for example casting same thing if we are sending any cast of footwear print again for comparison purpose also we have to send the cast only not directly footwear so this is what only likes can be compared similar things can be compared it emphasizes the necessity to provide like or similar type of samples and specimens for comparison with the questioned items here i added example if the question document contains the type written text the document which is sent to the laboratory which contains type written text then for comparison purpose also type written text only should be sent but uh, there is no use in sending handwriting or printed specimens there is no mean with sending the handwritten or printed specimens for comparison if document is contain in type written text then type written text only should be sent for comparison that is what likes can be compared so there is an important requirement according to this uh, principle to supply specimen or samples of similar nature for proper comparison with the question sample recovered from the crime scene crime scene sample and that uh, sample which is to be compared should be similar in nature then principle of analysis the analysis can be no better than the sample analyzed the analysis of a sample the analysis of a evidence is not any more better than the sample actually to be analyzed if for example blood stain sample uh, the analysis of blood stain what is analysis doing the blood group and also dna analysis this is the laboratory work laboratory analysis of a blood stain actually that laboratory persons they do accurately analysis of blood they do accurate dna fingerprinting okay but whenever collecting the blood stain if investigator officer if he do any mistake if he contaminate the sample then if we collect a package and sent to the laboratory that contaminated sample then how much accurately laboratory persons do analysis also then definitely they get some error so according to this principle of analysis the analysis in the laboratory is the secondary thing but the first thing first important thing is proper collection and packaging of that sample that evidence so analysis in the laboratory is the secondary thing but first thing is proper collection and packaging of evidence the principle have great significance in the laboratory investigation of the clue materials improper sampling contaminations render the best analysis useless so even though that best analysis also becomes useless with the improper collection and packaging of the evidences so this principle says the necessity of the proper collection of the sample proper collection and package of the sample this is what principle of analysis yes if blood stain uh, while collecting the blood stain we have to take swabs if it is wet but uh, after taking that wet swabs we may not pack it directly we need to dry it in the shade after drying only we need to pack them otherwise that uh, it will get contaminations like microbial growth then it definitely affects the further analysis for example in a rape case the investigating officer collects the clothes of the victim which carry both blood and semen stains yes definitely in the rape cases we send that uh, clothes which have a blood or semen stains how investigating officer will collect them uh, after properly drying the clothes which have blood and semen stains and also uh, packaging packaging how should not touch e the stains each other and also that stains should not touch the walls of the container then proper packaging and sent to the laboratory for further analysis like whether that stains are semen or not blood or not then if stains are semen and blood only then what is the blood group then further analysis okay but if investigating officer sent the same cloth without proper drying then the results also will get errors so here according to this principle the collection and packaging also should be accurate then coming to the law of probability it helps in the 
reconstruction of the events of the crime like uh, uh, if there is a same if there is a blood stained knife in the crime scene and also there is a stab injury on the victim body then definitely investigating officer first assume that that uh, stab injury is because of that knife only but he may not share that before laboratory analysis results but he just assume that according to the probability la he just assume yes this injury could be because of that knife so probability is a mathematical concept which determines the chances of occurrence of a particular event he may not confirm that that injury is because of that knife but he just assume that it could be because of that knife and also there is chances it could be correct or there is chances it could be wrong so this is what is the law of probability it determines the chances of occurrence of a particular event in a particular way out of number of ways then all identifications in the crime scene be definite or indefinite uh, these all are made consciously or unconsciously but based on the law of probability these all identifications are based on the law of probability only here i discussed six laws and here brief summary about the last law of individuality state it states that every object whether it is natural or man made has an individuality which cannot be duplicated or copied into any other object like if you are talking about the fraternal twins they may have similar dna but they definitely don't have similar fingerprints their fingerprints are different so they are unique in nature then law of progressive change it states every object changes as the time progress so within less time accurately collect and package the evidences and locard's principle of mutual exchange it states every contact leaves a trace whenever two objects two persons or one person with any surface or object come into contact definitely there should be some mutual exchange of traces or materials which will helps to link the criminal with the crime scene which will helps to link the criminal with victim then principle of comparison only the likes can be compared similar objects similar evidences to be compared if we send a photograph of fired bullet then photograph of fired bullet only to be compared with that thing not directly bullet is compared then the principle of analysis the analysis can be no better than the sample analyzed analysis is the secondary part but before that important thing is proper collection of the sample then law of probability the chances of occurrence of uh, events particular events in the crime scene the taller assumed based on the probability law of probability here i discussed six laws and if you feel this lecture will helps you you can like and also you can share with your forensic friends and if you want more videos like this you can also subscribe to noble forensics